This is a microscopic section showing two lymph nodes, one larger one here and a smaller lymph node with some surrounding adipose tissue. In the larger node, we can see that there is an irregular geographic area with a dense eosinophilic appearance or reddish appearance and this seems to be surrounded by a paler zone. In the smaller node, we can see some large pale areas as well. Let's have a closer look at the smaller lymph node. So, paying attention to these areas, we can see that there are actually aggregates of cells that form nests and in larger areas they seem to co coalesce and join up together to form sheets. On closer inspection, we can see that these aggregates are composed of cells with rather oval to elongated nuclei and these cells have got abundant pale cytoplasm, so the NC ratio is low. All of these cells are actually activated macrophages and they are what we call epithelioid histiocytes. We call them epithelioid because they are large and they have quite abundant eosinophilic cytoplasm and they do resemble epithelial cells. So an aggregate of epithelioid histiocytes is known as a granuloma. We do not have to have any giant cells or even lymphocytes. As long as you have an aggregate of epithelioid histiocytes, that is a granuloma. Now let's pull back to lower power and see if we can see anything else. Now even at this power, you can start to appreciate that there are some larger cells here. Let's have a closer look. This cell, you can actually see the nuclei seem to be arranged in a ring at the periphery of the cytoplasm. This is a multinucleated giant cell and it is actually a histocyte or a macrophage as well. Uh, a cell with an arrangement of nuclei, almost like a horseshoe arrangement. This is called a Langhans giant cell and it's very often seen in tuberculosis or mycobacterial infection. Of course, it is not specific for TB infection, but it is quite a frequent finding. Here is another Langhans giant cell. You can see a very obvious horseshoe arrangement of the nucleus. Now let's go back to low power again and you notice that there are some intensely eosinophilic areas here and here within the granulomas and also here. And in fact, when we looked at the large lymph node again, we can see this very intensely eosinophilic area. So let's have a closer look and actually what we find is some granular, very amorphous material. There's no true form. We do not see any obvious cellular outlines. This is caseous necrosis. So on histology, we will just see some granular pinkish material reflecting the necrotic material in the center of the granulomas. And grossly, this would appear as pale, yellowish or whitish, very friable, cheesy material, which is why we use the term caseous necrosis. Caseous necrosis is another frequent feature of uh, tuberculosis. So the diagnosis here would be necrotizing granulomatous lymph adenitis. So essentially there are granulomas, but there is central necrosis in many of the granulomas, therefore necrotizing granulomatous lymph adenitis. And a very important cause that needs to be excluded is of course mycobacterial infection. So what we would do is we would probably do a special stain such as a Zeal-Nielsen stain to look for the acid-fast bacilli.